Hi, I'm Brad with Louisiana Outdoors and Huntersbundle.com, and I want to congratulate you on your selection for the Samic Sage Recurve Bow. I truly believe it's the best value and quality for your money on the market today in recurve bows. And I'm going to cover setup and some things that might help you as a new recurve bow owner, as well as look at arrow selection and a few accessories at the end. I'm going to start with giving you some suggestions on poundage because people have a tendency to overbow themselves or get more poundage than what they need. A good general idea is if you're an adult male bow hunting, 50 pounds is probably a good, a good range. Um, 40 pounds, 45 pounds for a young adult or somebody new and getting into target archery. And then probably 25 to 35 or 40 pounds maybe for a woman, depending on strength. And everybody's going to be different and those are just some general guidelines. First, when your bow arrives, since it's a takedown which allows for easy carry and transport, you're going to need to put it together. You're going to get it. It's going to come with the riser or the handle, the limbs, and the string. All right, the first thing you're going to notice is if it is a right-handed bow, as you're holding it, as if it's uh, kind of a pistol grip there, the shelf where the arrow sits is going to be on the left side of the bow. If it's a left-handed bow, when you hold it, the shelf where the arrow sits is going to be on the right side of the bow. Generally, the bow that you need to order, if you're right-handed, order a right-handed bow. If you're left-handed, order a left-handed bow. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the limbs on. One limb has writing on it, which says 62, which is the length of the bow, the AMO length, and then 50 pounds, in this case, for the, for the poundage. The one with the writing on it is going to go on the bottom, and it's going to go facing to the rear towards the shooter as they're holding it. And you're going to insert the limb bolt. And sometimes the limb bolts might be kind of hard to get in there, in which case I'm going to show you a little trick. What you want to do is you want to insert the bolt into the limb, and the bolt's going to go like that with the, the little bushing there facing up. You're going to put the bolt all the way through the limb, and then you're going to start it in the hole and turn it three or four times. Once you have the bolt started, then you can slide the limb down the bolt into the pocket, and that assures for uh, a perfect alignment. Every now and then, since there's kind of tight tolerances, the bolt may not turn freely in there, and if it's too hard to turn with your hand, then you may need to give us a call and let us know, or send us an email. And you're going to tighten that down where it's good and, and positively snug by hand. And then we're going to get that nice and snug. And now the bow is assembled. And you'll notice as you hold the bow, the limbs are actually going to point forward because for a recurve bow, what has to happen is the limbs need to be bent backwards to put the stress on them for your strength to put the string on it. Sometimes we do get some people that put them on backwards, so take a good look at that. Um, the way that your hand fits into the to the throat of the grip there and the writings on the back side and they bend forward. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the string on. Now one of the things you may uh, want to pay attention to is that some, sometimes people think they have a, a short or the strings too long because when they try to put it on they put it on the wrong side of the bow on the front like that because that's what the bow kind of looks like and of course that doesn't work. Um, for a recurve or longbow string, the string is going to generally be four inches shorter than the AMO bow length. So for a 62-inch bow, the bow is going to be a, um, the string is going to be about 58 inches. So these strings will run generally on average from 58 to 58 and a half inches, and that's going to depend on how many twists you put in the string. If you put more twists in the string, the string is going to be a little shorter. If you don't have as many twists in it, it's going to be a little longer. And that's how you're going to adjust your brace height, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. I'm going to slip, I'm going to slip the, the end loop over the top limb and slide it all the way down the bow to where I can get my other end of the string down here to put on the other one. And then I'm going to put my twist in it. 
I'm going to say put about put about 30 twists in it at first because these st strings will stretch quite a bit and as it stretches you're going to probably want to put more twist in it later. So about 30. Okay. All right. 30 twists and you can see that that kind of kinked up the string a little bit, but you're going to notice when we when we put a lot of tension on this bow, it's going to it's going to stretch out nicely. So then we we hook the other end back and now we have one end hooked on the bottom and then the top end slides up the limb. Whether you put it on before you string it or after you string it, you're going to want to put your rest material on the bow, which is basically just going to, it, number one, it's going to keep your shot quiet. Your arrow's not going to be hitting against the wood and it's also going to protect the wood a little bit from getting scratched up by the shots going through it. So you're going to have uh, a piece of shelf material and then a s piece of side plate material and what you're going to do is you're going to just trace them out on the shelf and then cut them out with the scissors and the other one you're going to make just kind of a little uh, rounded section which I've I've done two here so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our shelf material down that I've cut out to fit And then we're going to put our side plate material on and where you're going to want to put that is basically right over the hole that's in it the plunger hole and i'll leave just maybe an eighth of an inch gap there in the in the corner all right now we're going to install the knock point on the string which is a little brass knock or you can even use dental floss you can tie it in several different knots and around in a circle if you don't have a knock point just something that you're going to be able to put that arrow generally your arrow is going to knock right underneath it and what's very important is you're going to want to have that knock high you're going to want that arrow to float off the top of that rest if it's what you think it might make it it fly funny but it floats off the top and then it straightens itself out if it's knocked down too low or kind of almost even it'll usually hit that rest and when it hits it then it kicks it up and then and then it's kind of going crazy so you want to be knock high about I put them about a half inch above above center so about a half inch knock high and that's a good starting point and then as you get into more experience and tuning your bow and all there's there's things you can do it's called bear shaft tuning and we'll get into that in a future lesson but about a half inch high is a great starting place and you should get good arrow flight with that Alrighty, I think that's everything we need. We're going to go in there and take a few shots and show you how it shoots and maybe a couple of quick pointers and then hopefully you can go and enjoy your Samic Sage recurve bow. Okay, you're ready to string up your bow now. We're going to do it a couple of different ways, but the first way I'm going to show you is with a bow stringer and a bow stringer is, is definitely the preferred method. It's, it's best for your bow. We're going to slide the one end over the the limb there on the bottom and then there's a smaller one over the top that allows you to get to the string a little bit better and then we're gonna step on it in the middle and then as we pull up we're gonna slide the string down over the end and then you're gonna inspect both ends and make sure the strings went in the grooves okay and that's it your bow is strong now what you want to look at though is brace height at this point. Brace height is going to be the measurement between the throat of the grip and the string which right now I'm at 8 inches. The Samic Sage uh, brace height is supposed to be anywhere between 7.5 to 8 and a quarter. So we're in that. That 30, 30 twist we put in the string put us right at a little under 8 inches so that's good. Okay, now we're going to unstring it with the stringer. Lift up, take the pressure off, remove the string 
out of the groove and let it slide right down the limb. Okay, now the other way, which I will tell you that it's not a preferred method of stringing a bow because you can, you can twist the limbs uh, and mess a bow up. However, if you do it correctly, uh, it can be okay. What you wanna do is you have the string there. You wanna step with your right foot through the string and the bow. And then you're gonna put the bottom limb on your left foot. Now here's where people can mess up. If you turn your foot and the limb is crooked on your foot and when you're bending and it's bending and crooked, then that can hurt the bow. But I turn my leg to where it's uh, very evenly on the limb and there's no twist. And then you grab the top, push forward, slide the string up into the groove. And there we go, your strong Samic Sage recurve. All right, we're ready to shoot the bow. There's a couple of different uh, things you can use. I like, I use a glove sometimes and I use a tab others. Um, gloves probably the most common, so we're gonna use the glove. If you don't use a glove, you're gonna find that you're gonna be in a lot of pain <laughs> in short order. Okay, you're gonna knock the arrow below the knock point. There's basically two main ways you can shoot. Split finger with one on top and two under, or you can shoot with three under. You'll see a lot of your more advanced shooters shooting three under. It gets the arrow a little bit closer to your eye, which makes it a little bit easier to aim. Um, so uh, I shot split finger for years and years. A few years ago, switched over to, to three under, and I very much recommend three under. Now, what you want to do is draw back, draw back and try to get a good solid anchor point. It's a recurve. It's going to be hard to draw back. You may shake a little bit. That's okay. Draw back, anchor in the corner of your mouth, pick a spot, focus on it, aim, and shoot. And when you shoot, you're basically just letting that, you're just holding and then not holding anymore. You're not trying to throw it forward or anything like that. You're just letting the arrow slip right out of your string. Try to develop that habit of holding. Draw back, anchor in the corner of your mouth, hold, and shoot. Nice quiet bow. Good group. Knock below the knocking point. Draw back, anchor, hold, and release. And I hope you enjoy shooting your Samic Sage bow. I do truly believe, I've dealt with a lot of recurve bows, and I do believe this is the best quality bow, best recurve bow for the money on the market. Um, you want to shoot arrows with feathers in it. That's really important, feathers on them. And there's also a few other accessories you might want to look at, a glove, some string silencers, things like that. And I'll post a little list here at the end of this video. And I hope you enjoy your bow. And thank you for watching. I'm Brad with Louisiana Outdoors and HuntersBundle.com.